Folks, remember the 59 four-wheel drive Dodge Cummins Coronet we're making? The, the issue we had with lifting with this A-frame, the A-frame wasn't tall enough. And then we were gonna go through and rent a lift, which turns out was a minimum 500 bucks just to get a stupid skid steer that I don't even know would lift high enough. So, to keep it kind of with nasty customs fashion, what I did was I went to the dump and got some new pipe. We're going, right now, what I'm working on is making this A-frame two feet taller. One thing I do have to say is thank you guys very much for this. All your likes, comments, subscriptions, the support allowed me to use my YouTube money for good. And we have a new Milwaukee chop saw because old reliable down there finally bit the bullet. All the support we get goes right back into uh, making these videos and building these, building this junk. So thank you. Let's just jump right into being mean to this thing. Uh, first impressions. It's just so, it's a lot of plastic. And I kind of got a Milwaukee one thinking hopefully this will be the last one I ever need to buy, but. cut it now we just got to see if that pipe fits over those legs because the, the shitty thing about this a-frame is these two legs are different size pipe than those legs also that leg is bent because i think this thing's had a pretty rough life and you gotta make it count because i ain't got very much of this shit okay so that will fit okay so we verified that piece of three inch slides up those legs perfect and i've got enough there i'd like to do four feet ideally i'd like to go up the original legs two feet have two feet left and then put a new cross brace which i bought some angle iron i got in the bus for that oh bub's over there check him out there's moles over there and he's a mole killing machine you ain't having no luck today bub I love it when you catch live moles and bring them in my garage and let them loose. That's always nice. I don't know what these pipes were for, but they got these things on them with some type of a foam in there. Hopefully that hasn't rusted at all. Let me cut those off right quick. See what we're dealing with. What that is, probably some type of uh, asbestos. But anyway, it didn't rust the pipe out, so back to cleaning. So anyway, I think I've got enough. I can just go ahead now, I'm not even going to try to mess with that bit. I think we'll just lop that off. All right. Sorry about the neighbor's dogs. They just, they never shut up. That's why I don't feel bad about running chop saws and shit. Anyway, there's this side legs done and cut and slid on there. They're slid two feet up. Now, I did the measuring, and as it sit at doing it just like this, this thing will be 12 feet 12 feet tall. Or, I'm kind of torn here. Do I slide them down another foot? Only have a foot of the original leg into these pipes and just make this, make this thing an even 13 feet. I know 13 feet's a little high, but the, the lower the legs go, the wider the footprint on this thing is. Surely 12 feet would be high enough, but I, man, I'd hate to do all this and because it struggled to get to 59 to clear the bumper. We had to take the wheels off. And then as soon as the 59's done, I got Ram Charger body swaps to do. So I'm thinking we might just go ahead and make this sucker 13 feet tall and be done with it. All right, it's the next day. So after a night's sleep to think about it and a day at work to ponder on it, we're making this sucker 13 feet tall. So right now I'm gonna take these legs off, clean up underneath where they're gonna be covered so I can paint it so it's not just rusting under there because some of that metal's pretty pitted up because I'd like this thing to last much longer than me. It's as prepped and ready as it's gonna be. Now I'm just gonna throw some paint on those. Give it 15. Maybe 10 minutes to dry, slide those legs on and start tack welding. 
All right, folks, it is a uh, standing. This thing is super tall now. We got about maybe two hours, hour and a half till dark. As you can see, I just did a couple, you know, greasy tacks to get her stood up. So what we're gonna do now, finish welding these, look into some cross bracing, just get her braced up, and then we're gonna stress test this thing. Little Hobart 190. I mean, no one's ever accused me of being a welder. And we're running flux core because it's windy and I can't afford gas. This thing is tall. This thing is higher than the electric bill is gonna be. Good morning, folks. It's another day, December 4th, I think, anyway. Well, as you can see, we got our frame cross members and parts. I had them nicely painted. And then the wind blew them over in the dirt. I got this Harbor Freight Special Chain Hoist. She's a uh, two-tonner. So today we're gonna roll, well, of course, clean the accumulations out from in front of the Cummins and use this last nice kind of warmish day. And we're gonna, hook, cause I wanna stress test this uh, newly modified taller a-frame if it can get two front tires of that truck frame and engine and drivetrain off the ground and not fold like a cheap bedouin tent in a stiff desert breeze then i think we're gonna be in business so uh let me do a little cleaning hopefully where i've got it chained isn't too far back but here's the big test Moved. A little wobbly, but. It was just a test to see if it's actually gonna fall over, but those are front wheels off the ground. I'll have to go look up the actual numbers on what a Cummins automatic transmission, I mean, in front of. That's probably closer to 2,000 pounds right there. So I'm gonna go inside and set and just let this hang out for a little bit. And uh, yeah, if it can hold that thing, then I'm gonna call it, if it'll hold this, then I'll, then I'll just go ahead and venture a guess that it'll hold that 59 body now that she's three foot taller. Old booger welds for the win. This part's for you, Dave, because I know you're still watching. There you go. The old frame is now in the way in the yard. But, like I said, we're not using that. I just needed it to get my wheelbase set. And as you can see, that rear axle slid up a bunch. So, somewhere is my newly restored cross member I dropped in the dirt. Now we get to do the fun stuff and finish cleaning the frame, relocate that cross member, remount the front shock, the rear shock mounts to the cross member, and then I trust this thing enough that the next video you see on this mess is going to be lifting the car body and put it on there because this project has taken too long already. Not that there's a time limit or I care, it's just, you know. I don't make any claims to be a car builder. I'm just a idiot with a dream, but it's almost there. <laughs> 